Welcome to the second part of my series on Algebra 1. Today we'll be discussing grouping like terms. In this slide, we'll be defining like terms. But before we can do that, we need to recall a few things. 3 multiplied by itself 4 times is written as 3 to the power of 4. And this number 3 to the power of 4 is a number that is written in index, exponential or power form. Getting a close examination of this number 3 to the power of 4, the 4 is referred to as the index, exponent or power, whereas the 3 is the base number. This is extended in the use of variables. If I had a multiplied by itself 4 times, this would be equivalent to a to the power of 4. And here, the 4 would be the index, exponent or power, and the a would be the base. Now that we have done that, we can comfortably define like terms. Like terms are terms that have the same variable or variables, and these variables that are common also are written to the same power. Here are some examples. If I had 7m and 2m, these two terms are like terms simply because they share the same variable m and they are written to the same power that is m to the power of 1. But 1 is understood so we simply write m. Here's another example. If I had 7xy and xy, these two terms are alike because they have the same variables, that is the product xy and xy are written to the same power, that is x is written to the power of 1 and y is written to the power of 1. Here's another example, 3x squared and 2x squared. These are the same terms simply because you have an x squared term in common. They are the same variables and they are written to the same power. Now let us look at some non-examples. If I had 7m and 2my, are these like terms? The answer is no. Simply because they do not share the same variables. One has a y and the other does not have a y. So, since m is not equal to my, we say that these two terms are not alike. Take this for example. If I had 7m squared and the 2m, we can see that they have the same variable m, but they are written to different powers. And because of that, we can say these two terms are not alike. m squared is not equal to m. Take this for example. If I had a 2x cube y and 5xy cube, we can clearly see that we have an x and a y in common with both terms. However, in the term 2x cube y, the cube is written over the x and in the term 5xy cube, x is written to the power of 1. Clearly, they are not the same power. The reverse is happening with the y because in 2x cubed y, y is written to the power of 1 and in 5x y cubed, y is written to the power of 3. Because they are not written to the same power, x cubed y is not equal to x y cubed and so therefore these terms are not alike. In this slide, we'll be looking at some of the basic properties of using algebra tiles. But before we can do that, you would notice that the tiles are color coded. On one side of the tile is one color and on the flip side is another color. Take for example, the big square blue tile. This is the x square tile. On the flip side of this tile, would be red and it's the minus x squared tile. The rectangular blue tile is x, whereas the flip side of this tile is red and it's minus x. The small yellow tile is the unit tile and on the flip side of this tile is the red tile 
that is minus 1. When these tiles come together, you have a nullifying effect. For example, when the x squared meets with the minus x squared tile, we would have x squared minus x squared. This is equal to 0. When the x tile meets with the minus x tile, we would have x minus x and this is equal to 0. Similarly, when the unit tile 1 meets with minus 1, this would be equivalent to 0. Whenever these tiles come together, they are equivalent to 0. In other words, they nullify each other. Now that we have the basic understanding of algebra tiles, we can now look at grouping like terms using algebra tiles. Here's an example. Suppose if you had this, then to simplify this, what you first need to do is model this using algebra tiles. So you see here 3x squared. This means we model 3x squared by putting 3 of the blue square tiles. And when I see minus 3, we model this by putting 3 of the small red tiles. When I see minus 3x, then we model this by putting 3 of the red rectangular tiles. Then when I see minus x squared, we model this by putting 1 of the big red square tile. And we do the same for 5x. For 5x, we model 5x by putting 5 of the rectangular blue tiles. And the 2 represents 2 unit tiles, that is, 2 of the yellow tiles. Now that we have modeled our expression, the next thing to do would be to group the terms together or group the tiles that share the same characteristics. Remember, x squared goes with x squared, x goes with x, and constants or units go together. Let's straighten this up a bit. Right. Now you can see how the nullifying effect can take place. Because we have an x squared minus x squared. And we see x minus x. Also we are seeing 1 minus 1. In every area where there is a nullifying effect, we simply remove those tiles like this. Once we would have removed the nullifiers, our answer is right at hand. Here is our answer. Our answer would be 2x squared plus 2x minus 1. Now that we know how to group like terms using algebra tiles, we can now look at grouping like terms using a picture. Suppose if we had to simplify this. What we can do, we can draw pictures of these terms, but we can group the terms simultaneously. For example, if I were to model this, I would say 3x squared tiles. Then I will group the x squared tiles together in the same breath. So that I would have minus 4x squared tiles close to the x squared tiles. This is represented in square tiles that are of the same size, but we shade it in red. This signified that this is the opposite of x squared. Similarly, I would represent the minus 2x with two of the rectangular tiles that are shaded in red. And we group that together with five of the rectangular tiles that are shaded in red. So we now examine all the nullification that took place and we would end up having this. This would be our answer, minus x squared minus 7x. 
Having group-like terms using our picture model, it is now easy to transition into grouping terms abstractly. Suppose if we were given this to simplify. The first thing I will do, I will bring all the x squared terms together, like this. Then all the x terms together, like this. And all the constants together, like this. Remember, we can add or subtract terms that share the same characteristics simply by adding or subtracting the coefficients. So when we have 3 minus 1, we'd have 2. So 3x squared minus 2x squared would give me 2x squared. And when we have minus 3 plus 5, this would give me 2. So therefore, minus 3x plus 5x would be equal to 2x. Minus 3 plus 2 would be equal to minus 1. And so this would be our answer. Here's another example. I would group the terms like this and simplify like this so that this is our answer.